it's just been a couple minutes since I ended the last video of starting up this laptop and I figured I'm going to go ahead and come back and do some recording during the updates because there's a couple of interesting things to do here I think. It got to the Windows desktop uh, pretty quickly after I ended that video. However, there were a couple other screens that it came through. It, wanted, it prompted again to register with HP and I click on a skip link and then there was another list of privacy settings from HP to confirm the things that I already did on the video recording the last video. Now here I want to show connecting this to my HDMI capture device. This is the cable that connects to my HDMI capture device and what I'm going to be able to do is connect that to this port replicator. Uh, they called it a mini port hub adapter. And then in order to connect that to the computer, I have to connect that to the only USB-C port it has, which means I have to disconnect the power connector. The screen went dim because it's now on battery power. And then connect the power adapter to that USB-C port on the hub. And then the screen went brighter and it shows that it's connected to power. Now I'm going to connect to the uh, internet, my wireless internet here, but let me pause for a moment see if I can get it on screen through the HDMI capture device. That worked really well. Here's the Spectre laptop through my capture device that I can make it visible now through the recording so with connecting those wires here, I was able to reconfigure the settings on my recording computer. And I did not have to press any buttons to get the display signal to go out through there. It just automatically uh, sensed what was happening and brought up the image on my XSplit recording software. Now I'll join to the Wi-Fi. It's this one called BATS. And I'll leave that check mark for connect automatically. And then I'll start the updates running and probably pause the video during the periods of time that it that it takes and you'll be able to tell from the time on screen how long the updates take <clears throat> that is the correct time connected to wi-fi now windows key update space settings is my habit for how to get into Windows Update and here it's running. I'm anticipating at some point it's going to ask, it's going to let us know that this computer is capable of Windows 11. Do we want to upgrade to Windows 11? I'm intending to decline that for now. The reason for declining that is John Ed is going to be using this occasionally when he travels. He at his desk at home, he will typically use his desktop computer, and it is Windows 10. And I'm figuring if I set this up with Windows 11, he's going to be using it so rarely that it just is going to be more convenient if it operates the same way as his home computer, meaning Windows 10. He does already know because of previous experience, and I've told him, before you go on a trip, you need to start the computer up and let it catch up with updates. Start it up and just let it sit. Let it sit overnight. Catch up with the updates. He's close to 90 years old, I think, still travels. And um, it's best if we keep it 
as straightforward and simple as, as possible. So it's not different than what he's accustomed to at this point. I'm going to go ahead and pause here and I'll come back later. The first round of updates are still in progress. I want to point out a couple of things. This is showing a download error for this one item. That's okay. That, that's a thing. It happens uh, after these updates finish installing. We'll restart the computer and do the update process again. And it's likely that this Intel software component had a download error because something else needs to get installed before it will successfully install. There may be some other explanation to it. I really don't care. The objective is to keep doing updates and until it no longer has updates to be installed. If I have a download error then, I'll address that issue. But at this point, it's likely going to take care of itself. The other thing I want to point out is that I was out of the room. I came back and found the screen completely dark. And I thought, I assumed, that it was in the midst of a restart. It was not. It went into power saving mode. So the screen went blank. That's very inconvenient when doing the initial setup of a computer. So I'm going to come over here onto the desktop area, click the right mouse button, choose Personalize. On the left hand side here I'll click on Lock Screen. I want to change the screensaver settings so that it doesn't time out. Here's Screen Timeout Settings. When it's plugged in, I don't want it to ever turn off. That's the way I like my computers all the time anyway. That way I know they are still on. If I want to shut them down, I'll go shut them down. I'm not concerned about the power savings of having a screen turn off. It's just not that big of a deal, in my opinion. And then here I'll scroll down and click Never. Another reason why I choose that is because I sometimes have computers running long processes. I want to be able to look into the room and see if it's still running or not without having to go over and touch the keyboard or the mouse to wake it up. So my uses may be different than the average person. That'll take care of that. And on this screen, I don't get a choice for screensaver. I'll click this left arrow in the upper left corner to go back to the prior screen scroll down to screen saver settings just to make sure that that's not turned on. Typically it's not turned on by default. And yes, there's no screen saver, so I'll leave that as is. Then close this screen. Now that also closed the update in progress screen, so I'll have to go open that up again. I'm going to shut down this welcome to my HP window, which I'm eventually going to uninstall the software that kicks that off anyway. Press the Windows key and then Update Settings shows up in the search results just when I typed the word Update. Press the Enter key to select that and I should see the update still in progress. This one is showing installing 74%. This is a cumulative update for Windows 10 version 20H2. This computer probably currently has 20H1. I'm going to do Windows key R, type Winver, press Enter and well that's interesting it shows 20h2 so this is oh i see this is the december cumulative update for 20h2 so it has yet to install 20h1 and 20h2 uh, 21h2 i could go to microsoft's um, media creation tool website and launch and upgrade to the most current version of Windows 10 from there, that would shortcut a lot of these update installations instead of going back and doing it over and over. And the choice to do that or not is probably more efficient to go to the website and do that. At one point I was thinking, well, that's more of my time than just letting these updates run, but yeah, it's not really true because it doesn't take long to do that on the Media Creation Tool website. 
This 74%, typically what it ha happens is it gets stuck at 74% and it'll sit there for a long time. And then the rest of it going up to 100% is, is very quick. And I think even many times you don't even see that increment from 74 up to 100%. That might be a sometimes thing, not sure. Let's put a pause again. I've talked myself into this. I'm going to go to the media creation tool and, and give this a shot with installing directly to the most current ISO image that Microsoft has. Now it's still, after installing it, I'm still going to have to do updates because the image um, that's on Microsoft's site isn't going to include the updates that have occurred since that image was created. Now notice that it's still stuck at the 74%. I don't think that I can actually start installing from the media creation tool until the update in progress is finished. I am curious if I go ahead and click restart now before this one's actually installed, if I can get back to a point where I could start the install with the media creation tool. All right, I'm going to go ahead and try restart now and see what I get. It is restarting. So that cumulative update was not finished installing. How smoothly is this piece going to go? I don't know. It could complete that installation during this reboot. Maybe, maybe not. I'm going to turn off the picture in picture here and keep the recording going. So this will document how long this takes. If you would like to, you can slide the playhead forward until you see my picture in picture come back on screen. That's how you know that it's, that it's completed.
All right, that took whatever amount of time it took. You can tell by looking at the time down in the bottom right corner and compare it to the time before the reboot started. Windows key, actually, let me escape. Uh, Windows key R and WinVer enter. See that it's 20H2. Windows key update space settings, press enter. Last check today, 403. I'm going to come down to view update history and I'm just wondering if it did install that cumulative update. Yes, it did complete that cumulative update install. So if I do check for updates again, if it want, if it goes offers straight to 21H2, then maybe I'll let it go through again. But if I do this 21H1, and then whatever amount of time that takes, and then I have to do another round to get 21H2, it just potentially could be a long time. And I've been down that road before. So I want to go ahead and try this method of doing from the media creation tool. Now I launched Microsoft Edge and it's giving me an initialization process for Microsoft Edge. It's trying to sign in to Microsoft Edge even though I haven't given it a Microsoft account yet. There's a get started button. I don't see an X in the upper right corner. I'm going to try escape. Nope, can't escape out of that. Get started. I'll choose focused. Focused gives a very sparse screen. Whereas you can see in the background here, it's loading all this extra clutter. Personally, I don't like the extra clutter. So I used focused. And we can see in the background that it's already lost the clutter. And then click confirm. I'll continue without signing in. There we've got the browser. Now this is this one here is also a first launch experience. To demonstrate that I'm going to close Edge and reopen it and it should go straight to the focused new tab page. Yes it did. Then I'll let's see search the web for media creation tool. There's a few different ways that you can search for this same page, but that's just the habit that I've grown into. We want to use Microsoft.com, Software Download, Windows 10, Media Creation Tool, so that sounds like the right location. This one, the URL actually has the word create in it. I'm guessing either one of those will probably go to the same site. Download the tool now for Windows 10. So I'll click on that and that'll get us to the page that I want. So this is what we want. Download Windows 10 update now. Windows 10 November 2021 update. That would be the 21H2. That looks like good. Well, good way to go right there. If I wanted to create a USB memory stick, USB thumb drive with the installation media, I could go this way. I clicked on update now and down here it did a download showing up in the bottom left corner for open file. That's interesting. Microsoft Edge usually does the download in the upper right corner. I'm not sure why that's coming in the bottom left corner, but I, I think I have noticed that happen sometimes and just haven't cared to figure out why sometimes it's in bottom left, sometimes it's upper right. If you know that, put it in the comments under this video because I'm not going to bother go researching it. One of the best features of Windows 10 that keeps getting newer, the PC is currently not running the latest. This PC is running 20H2, the latest is 21H2. So that's going to get me straight there. And I'm pretty sure that this is going to get me there faster than if I went through the normal update sequence. Down here in the bottom left, it's doing a countdown. And now that is starting. 
So this is looks like it's going to be very similar to the update, uh, the Windows update experience, but this should be taking me straight to the most recent version. I could have gone here when I first connected to my Wi-Fi. That probably would have been a better way to go. I'm going to turn off the picture in picture. I'll leave the recording going and you can scrub forward till my picture in picture comes back in. That way you'll be able to judge by the time on the bottom right corner how long this procedure took.
It's counting down for, I think, a total of 30 minutes for it to automatically restart. So I think it must have just finished that installation shortly ago. I'll click restart now. So that took quite a while to install. I would have been better suited to install that right away when I first connected the computer to the internet. And as I've been thinking about it, questioning whether I should go ahead and do Windows 11, the argument in favor of installing Windows 11 is that John Ed is likely going to get a prompt every now and then, maybe it's once a month, I'm not sure how often, that'll get a prompt saying that his computer is qualified or capable of Windows 11. Do you want to install it now? He'd have to click to decline that. And that's a little bit of a nuisance factor for him. For what he does on the computer, he does email, he does web browsing, uh, does online banking. The things that he does with the computer, probably it's not going to make that much difference that he's on Windows 11 instead of Windows 10. His other computers are eventually going to have to get upgraded to Windows 11. Assuming he's still in the mind for using a computer in 2025. So, yeah, I'm still a little mixed. Now, I already checked on this computer, uh, the programs that are installed on it. It doesn't have very much clutter at all installed on it from HP. Sometimes I would consider doing a fresh install of Windows 10 or Windows 11 and then install whatever software from HP that I want. That wouldn't have been a bad choice on this. Typically I would choose that if it has a lot of extra clutter installed from HP. This one does not. So why would I still be attracted to that? Well, the reason is that doing a fresh install of Windows 10 is actually faster than this. Yeah, keep in mind that you're still going to have to do Windows updates after that. Well, even after doing this Windows 10, updating to the current version of Windows 10, I'm still going to have to do updates. A fresh install of Windows 10, I think, would have gone faster on this computer than what that update um, and the length of time that it took. So here it's working on updates. I'm going to turn the picture and picture off again. You can slide that playhead forward to the next set. Well, wait a minute. Here it's already restarting. <laughs> those, those counters from 0% to 100%, they are not predictable. If you were to, and I've done this before, I created a spreadsheet where I put in all the time increments from the different stages of an update progress. Well, a few weeks into the future, those numbers are probably going to look different because the updates that are installing are different. There, it is common that it'll get stuck on a percentage number for a period of time. And then also another thing that happens is the graphs that go from 0% to 100% or even if it's just a digital like we're seeing right now, it, the, the, the first one may be downloading, the next one may be verifying, the next one may be installing. And if you don't make that distinction, you could be seeing the number getting close to 100% and thinking that you're almost done and you're not because it's just going to go on to the next sequence. So here this is working on updates. That's not downloading, that's not, in, that's not verifying, that's not installing. This is even another term yet. So 90%. How long do we think that's going to take? Is it worth turning off my picture? I don't know. Still stuck on 90%. Okay. Picture turning off. Scrub your playhead forward till the next time my picture appears.
All right, where are we at now? Windows key update settings. Enter. Getting ready for Windows 11. Check hardware requirements. I want to tell to not not do Windows 11. We are working on it. We're doing some extra testing, making sure it's ready for yours. Oh, okay. I figured it would automatically be ready for this computer or be a slam dunk, but I guess not. So here's some more updates. This should probably quick. This is Defender Antivirus Defender Cumulative Update Preview. It's probably small. Update for 21H2. That could take a while. Uh, Windows Defender Antivirus. So this one here, it doesn't actually say cumulative, so that might be quick. This is a cumulative update preview, but it's just for .NET Framework. That one should be quick. I'm suspecting these two will be pretty quick and that we're almost done. Now, this is a November of 21. It doesn't say, it doesn't indicate that it's a cumulative update, so I think it'll be quick. Pending restart. Restart now. Yeah, so all the updates are done. So here's another restart. Looks like we're almost done here. And this progress indicator will probably go pretty quick because those are small updates. Yeah, there it goes. It's restarting already. When it restarts, it's probably going to go through another progress indicator, which would probably be quick. Or it might go straight to the desktop. It's really not predictable. If you did enough of these updates, multiple updates every day, you probably would be able to predict how long it's going to take and if you're paying attention to each of the updates. So there it is. There's the desktop. We're finished with the updates. The next step is to do my routine things that I go through for configuring a computer after all the updates are done. That's going to be a separate video. Hope this is useful. Catch you later. Have a great day. Goodbye.